some time, is it? It's 7.30 a.m. Okay, still good. Okay, guys, it's alarm yesterday. Properly, this time. No matter how much I want to, binge watching anime so late into the night is never a good idea when I have to wake up early. Well, not every night, at least. As soon as I give my limbs a good stretch, I check the location of my Hulu calendar. Big day at work. Yep, super early. My lips from a form of smile. Once I finish brushing my teeth, I get dressed and grab my satchel. And I'm missing something. I give a quick glance to the room until I find what I'm looking for right on top of my desk. Here you are, you little rascal you. I pick it up. It reads... And put your name. Oh. I'm mean, thinking it was something important. Because you're pronouns. Okay. This is another kitchen car certified that Charlie Darby, who uses she, her pronouns, is commissioned by the Silver Ring Police Department as a criminal profiler for the province of Cedarbury. Hmm. Soon, very soon, there will be a completely new word written on this ID. Just you wait. Okay, whatever that means. Alright, let's do this. But first things first. I can't start the day without a good breakfast. And I forgot I ran out of food. How do you run out of food? Now, I love living by myself, but having to buy groceries constantly is such a pain in the ass. Hope that one day online delivery will to such an extent that everything you buy gets teleported right into your kitchen. Doesn't hurt the dream, right? Anyway, not much I can do when the grass is reality. I guess I'll just grab something at a coffee shop or whatever. Mm, are there any good ones nearby? I haven't had much of a chance to visit any food establishments since I moved to this neighborhood. I take out my phone from my jacket and start browsing cafes with decent little reviews. Let's see here. Cup of coffee, 4.5 stars, 1,195 reviews. Never heard of this one before. I mean, it's relatively new. It does seem like a nice enough place, and the food looks cute. It is always great in my book. Yeah, I'm so. He's in hand, I walk to the door. And head out. And like the last couple of days, which were constantly threatened by the heavy rain forecast, this morning it's bright, sunny, and there's a breeze in the air. I guess the storm passed right through instead of raising us with its presence. Hmm. I walk along the road of the Golden Mellow, slowly but surely getting closer to my destination. Well, at least according to the little maps. I don't usually head this way when I go to work. My brain is usually in auto mode in the mornings, especially if I need to get somewhere quick. Like, well, my job, if you'll forgive the repetition. Maybe I should reconsider changing my route from time to time for such a bustling city. Park is pretty chilly. Pretty chill, I mean. <laughs> I don't think I've seen more than a few joggers and one or two people walking their dogs. Still, why is it called Golden Mellows? Wouldn't it make more sense to call it Silver Meadows, given that we're in Silver Ring City and all that jazz? Trees don't even get that golden during fall. Yeah, I definitely need some coffee if I'm already thinking about random shit like this. <clears throat> Two blocks of walking later, my journey has come to an end. You arrived at your destination. Close Google Maps, enter the cafe. Awesome, awesome. The thing smell of like coffee hits me straight away. Several pastries can be seen near the register too. It's not that big of a place, but it isn't small either. In fact, the size is just right. As to the coziness. I glance down at the pictures and the reviews once again. Certainly are catching, but they don't do it justice. It really goes without saying. There are some things in life that are better to see for yourself. You're welcome. Warm greeting from the cashier brings me right back to Eric. Name's Arthur. What will you be having today? 
Oh, hi. Uh, sorry, I was a bit distracted. First time. Yes, it was too obvious, huh? Arthur laughs. I'm kind of tempted to ask him why he's wearing his coat like that. Uh, aesthetics, maybe? What can I say? You're not the only first timer to get lost in thought as soon as they enter. Scratch that. Why is he wearing one in the first place when he works indoors? Wouldn't the sweater make more sense? But to be fair, I do try to make this place look as charming as possible. Maybe it's a new trend. Moving on. Let's actually be part of the conversation, Charlie. Wow, oh, the bonus place? Yep, right on. That's really cool. I don't think no many cafes where you see the owner on the job. You work here by yourself, Arthur? I do have another employee who bakes sometimes, but he mostly handles deliveries whenever he's not at his other jobs. And it's not a big cafe, so I don't have to worry too much. I see. Well, that was weird. Does this employee have a strange side job or something? Do they also wear their coat like Arthur here? Anyway, sorry, I was just trying to make small talk, but got a bit sidetracked. Are you ready to order? Alright, that's why I came in here in the first place. LOL. Let's see. I think that's the menu hanging by the wall. Apart from coffee, tea, and juice, there seem to be a moderate variety of pastries and a few savory options. Hopefully, it doesn't make me choose. Latte bears, bear casino, bear casino, blueberry pie, teddy, bro, teddy bear roll, ham beaker, Bernard's cobble tea. Someone here is really fond of bears. Also, who the hell is Ber Bernard? I'm having a bit of trouble deciding. Do you have any recommendations? First things first, do you happen to be a vegetarian or vegan? I don't know anything. It's nice to see you have more options though. Right on, right on. And this is for here or to go? To go. Hopefully this gives me the energy boost I need. Ah, is it an important day? You could say that. Arthur smiles and nods. Give me five. Okay. Arthur heads towards the machine for a few steps. From the register and in no time starts grinding some coffee beans. When he's done with that, I see him grab what looks like a milk frother and it's then that I realize he's making a latte. Once there's enough foam, Arthur raises his frothy head milk to a relatively high position and begins pouring it into a paper cup. When the cup gets filled, the lower he steps his hand until there's nothing left to pour. Finally, he covers the latte with a lid, grab the pastry from the glass display. Thank you for waiting. Here's our Tegoya Latte Cup. If you need an energy boost, this will do the trick. Latte Arthur gives me has an old adorable sticker with the logo of the cafe on top of the cardboard sleeve. This little one is Bernard. Cup of coffee. It really is a very fitting name. And this is one of the most popular pastries, Berry Big Bun, filled with custard. Looks like its name, the bun is shaped like a bear. A very big bear. Thank you, Arthur. You look so good. I can't wait to try them. Glad to hear it. Have a good day now, won't you? A very good day. I <laughs> definitely will now. See you. I raise a hand and farewell as I exit the shop. Okay, that was a, was a good time. I feel a little longer than I thought. But it's okay. It doesn't hurt to have a little push once in a while. I got my phone, check the time. There we go. Shit, I'm gonna be late. Trying to run. Yeah, I'm dying. Look this up. Don't run while trying to spill, not to spill any coffee or any of your belongings for that matter. Actually, don't run when I'm going to work, period. Yeah, this is strong, tougher than a fucking marmalade jar. Well, at least I won't be late now. So it's kind of a miracle that I didn't bump into anyone. Every road is pretty crowded today. I'm waiting for the street light to change. I take a look at the barberry bun. That chunkiness. That shine. It's like it's calling to me. Okay, if you look at me like that, I guess I'll have to take a bite. Hey, you! 
get out of the way. Okay. <laughs> the bicycle approaching. All right. The bear bun died. Succumb to a bicycle's wheel. <sighs> wow. All right. That voice. Turn around and spot the identity of the bear bun murderer. The thing on, I guess, on his backpack says trigger happy human. Not good. He has a far much better livery backpack he was carrying has filled some of his contents too. How in the hell did I latte survive, but not these? They got glares in me. You. Mm. What the fuck did you know? Well, I told you to, dumbass. <laughs> okay. Excuse me. Let's, let's say we might to have fun with this. Okay. Um, yeah. I don't want you, doesn't even want to give this guy this time of day, ignore him. Gotta get mad. Nah, fuck this guy, fuck him. You got some nerve, asshole. Huh? The fuck did you call me, dipshit? Asshole, shithead, douchebag. He that go on? How was it my fault when it was you who wasn't paying attention? Funny coming from someone who was lost in fucking La La Land! Damn. Wasn't even crossing the street. You need to be aware of your surroundings. That's my line. We continue wearing each other for a few moments. Yeah. All right. Whatever. Well, I don't have time for this bullshit. The guy retrieves the field cottage from the ground, puts them away in the delivery backpack before hopping onto his bike once again. <sighs> this delivery dude. Hmm. Sayonara, dipshit. Hope I don't see your ass wandering the street again. Make sure to show him the middle finger before he leaves. God, it's not like I need to lose my temper to this extent. But he just pushed all of my buttons. Hopefully, no one from work saw that. The direct bear button in the nearby trash can. It's a shame. But I'll just buy another one later. Made it barely. It's almost nine. Well, at least I'm not late. We're taking the elevator and walking down the third floor hallway. I arrive at the office of the criminal investigations department. Close call, Charlie. I almost thought you wouldn't make it. Not like you, not like you. Blood ran cold or something. As if. I just got breakfast somewhere else and it was a bit crowded. Whatever helps you sleep at night, kiddo. Oh, shut up, Carl. He laughs. Anyway, Charlie, you to cut the conversation short, but I need to take care of some really important business. Okay. Carl puts a hand on his chest in a faint shock. Come on, kiddo. I'm not even gonna ask what. Oh, for the love of... No. Patience, Charlie. Remember, today's special. Sure, Carl. What's this important business? Confidential. I have a strong urge to throw my monitor so that it conveniently lands on his head. Yes. Now you should see the look on your face. Uh, well, I guess I can tell you. He gets up from his seat and approaches me with his hands close to his mouth, as if he's about to reveal a secret. You know, David from the second floor? The engineer? Yeah, yeah, him. Turns out he bought the wrong SD card for the surveillance cameras at the detention center. And you know this, how? Carl grins. I happened to arrive early and saw him panic on the phone, probably something to his partner or something. Thing is, the guy was scared shitless, going off about how the cans would go full at any moment, about how he would lose his job. Well, should be fair, yeah, he could. Can't he go buy a replacement? Nah, he didn't go check to see these TV cams in the latest crime scene, kiddo. Oh, I didn't even mention it. Anyway, he said he replaced him tomorrow morning, but I'll say him. Again, you know this how? He gives me a annoying smile. Really, Carl? You really turned in for this. What makes you think I wouldn't say anything to the boss? 
Okay, though. David's not the only one. I've got dirt on. Watch your office tomorrow. Carl turns away and goes back to his seat. Why is Carl working in this department again? He's one of those people who's been here the longest, right? He's not even that much older than me and the others, and yet he calls everyone kiddo. Well, that's a fraud division boss and the chief of police. I can never tell if his blackmailing schemes are just for show or if they're the real deal. How does someone like him become a police officer? Whatever. I get to my own work area right next to the pile of boxes. Someone should really take these away. Why are they still so many people files? Just digitize everything. And the 20th century for Pete's sake. Well, not everything should be digital because technology is technology and sometimes things be corrupted and erased. <sighs> now is not the time to vent your frustrations on a massive car war, Charlie. Right as I turn on my monitor, I hear that I'm going to laugh for my security. That's one. Okay, well, that's <laughs> nice belt. Uh, Charlie, my dear partner. Morning, boss. I don't know. I told you to stop calling me that. It feels so cold and formal. Come on. What did we just talk about the other day? But soon enough, we'll be equals, you know? Calling me boss won't be an accurate description anymore. So why not get used to calling me by my name starting now? Equals, huh? I mean, that's only if I succeed in finding the criminal, right? Charlie, Charlie, that was just a figure of speech. You really think the chief will go back on his word after all the hard work you put in these, these, these uh, past few years? Now let's try again. Morning, Charlie. Morning, Aslan. Atta girl, that wasn't so hard now, was it? I guess not. I think this bundle of energy is my boss. Although I see him almost every day. It's very hard to believe sometimes. Unless he's using his out of world and analytical skills, that is. He's not the chief of criminal investigations, departed from nothing. And once today's over, I'm gonna work alongside him as a fellow detective from now on. No more missed assistant. So, where did we leave off yesterday? There was a lead on Tiger's possible whereabouts. Ah, that's right. Any news on that regard? Unfortunately, just another person claiming to be him. Ah, what is wrong with these people? Do they seriously think serial killers are a joke? As if I didn't have enough already with the dumbasses ringing the headquarters thinking they figured out the culprit just because they read murder on the Orient Express. You know all sorts of people in this world? No kidding. Guess I can see the charm and claiming to be a defender of justice. It's just not the right way. A murderer is still a murderer. God, he ran gets scary sometimes. Well, on the right side, we do quite have a few important details regarding Tiger, don't you think? He's a man, possibly in his late twenties, early thirties, without outstanding physical capabilities. Though he uses a sharp object as his killing method, most likely a knife. He's bound to use some sort of camouflage to disguise the lower people's guards. And he got an envelope for my satchel. He always uses a calling card. How'd you get that? Shouldn't the forensics be analyzing it? Oh, they are. Along with everything else at the crime scene. This is just a replica that I asked them to make for us. I'm afraid I don't follow. I have a plan, Asla. Hear me out, okay? Go ahead. We should make a copycat crime. Not a real one, of course. Just something that will trick Tiger into coming our way. We'll hear a fake murder. These replica that will alert the media that Tiger struck again. This was just another killer? I doubt it would work. This is Tiger we're talking about. No one with such a strong sense of justice won't tolerate his name being dragged through the mud. And if he knows this is a... You're a genius, Charlie. Charlie? Ah, uh, I guess I'm grasp my shoulders. Before being a killer, Tiger's a prideful guy. If he finds out that the police no less is trying to ruin his name, he will lose his mind. Before I can give an answer, as it takes a calling car replica out of my hands. In fact, why don't we go even further and make the chief a fake target? And we think he'll agree to it. If it's for a good cause, he won't mind. I consider catching a serial killer who's been a pain in our asses for the last few months to be a good cause, you know? Well, you feel like that, probably yeah. 
Atta girl. Should I contact the chief now then? Nah, I'll for it. I'll take care of everything. Are you sure? Yep. Mm, we are in the criminal investigation department for nothing. Well, not though. Yeah. Let's boss show you what he's made of before you can't call me that anymore. Okay, okay. When should we put the plan in motion then? Mm, this evening? What? Are you serious? The faster the better, right? Well, we, we don't know when Tiger will strike again, after all. Not to mention the amount of time it takes from murder to murder for getting shorter. That's true. Can you actually do it? Okay, got it. It'll help. I'll help uh, with some details. We might need to make the story more believable. Even though someone from the Target News Agency will get here at the drop of a hat once we call him. Good God, Charlie, Charlie. What would I do without you? You'd be hopeless. Hmm, you got me there. Okay, I'm going ahead with the other preparations then. Yep, see you later, Adam. Ta ta. Helen starts to walk away towards the hallway until something makes him stop in his tracks. He comes back. Charlie? Yes? Congratulations on your promotion. Thank you. Smile later, partner. What a weird morning it's been. Well, no matter. Let's get to work. Yep. Mm. Might as well save just to be safe. Return, yeah. Time goes by fast when you're concentrating. Wonder if Aslan has already finished with the preparations. Only need to call Patrick for the scoop and we'll all be set. Maybe I could get some coffee from the machine on the second floor in the meantime. Oh, sounds like a plan. I'll never get used to these horrible orange stripes on the walls. Who the hell designed this building? <laughs> Thank God I don't have to see them unless I'm moving around from floor to floor. Anyway, coffee, coffee. Hmm. Who's that? I think he's from this division. Wait a second, he seems familiar. I start approaching him, the red haired man makes eye contact. Hmm. Yeah. <laughs> okay, he's gone. The uh, oh, just my phone. Charlie, could you fetch the chief from his office? Then we're ready to move the plane along. Sure thing. Okay, no time for distraction. Let's head to the chief's office. So I guess no coffee, which is fine. Chief Barrows, we're ready for the... Where is he? That's sad. He smells like blood. Please tell me this is a joke. Couldn't have been... No, it's not out of it, Charlie. You gotta stop assuming the worst every single time. Let's just make sure first. Take one step, then another, and another, and another, until I'm right next to the desk. Then I look behind it. Sprawled on the floor over a small pool of blood lies a small car with the image of a tiger's eye. And the moving corpse of Arden Burroughs, the former chief of police. I fucking knew it. Uh. Yo. Shoot. Hmm. We'll stay. Yeah, we'll stay out here. Yeah. Red-haired man comes out from the cover on the right side of the desk. This guy was the one on the street, and I knew I recognized him from somewhere. He just put on a wig and some makeup to cover his burn scar. You police moron, set me up! And if he's here, there's no one else he could be, but... So he's the tiger. Hooray! You earn a fucking gold star! Okay. You better tell me what the fuck is going on. <laughs> kill this guy to try and pin it on me. 
maybe, perhaps, possibly. Oh, honey, you shouldn't have. Safe for this too. Yeah. Oh, ex fucking excuse me, you're the one who killed me, yep. Yeah. Can't believe you stooped to love for a fake target. Uh, yeah, fake target isn't he? How convenient. Let's kill an innocent man and blame it on Tiger. Surely no one will notice. I have standards, dipshit. Mm. Yeah, because killing is so righteous. Ah, that's cute coming from a member of the police. Hmm. Smoker. Hate that I can't deny that. Okay, let's suppose for a second that he's actually telling the truth. Who would actually believe that? If you didn't kill him, you don't exactly have a clean record. Seriously, the scene is pretty damning. For both of us. Okay. We're over we're. Shit. Now I'm off to the office. I can see a few colleagues peeking from the door's entrance as well, including Carl. So it's true. Unbelievable. It's just as Mr. King said. What? Put your hands in the air. Nothing the Tiger does, he says, can't be the gun after all. Tiger, you're under arrest for the murder of Arden Burroughs and several other people. You have the right to remain silent. When the officer handcuffs Tiger's wrist, I start leading him towards the door. Make way, make way, this man is dangerous. Before Tiger disappears from my field of view, he glares at me one last time. I won't forget this. Mm. Keep walking. Hey. Once they're out of sight, I turn to the remaining officer in the room. Hey, what did you mean before? Did you know the chief was murdered even before you came here? He scowls. I mean, dumb will help you, traitor. What do you mean, traitor? I'm a detective. There's no way to treat your superior. Officer ignores me and points his gun at me. Where's Aslan? That's Mr. King to you. And considering your involvement in this, the only place you belong is in the filthy jail. Miss Darby. What be happening? What are you talking about? Involvement? I came here to get cheap, just like you told me. Didn't we plan to make him a fake target just this morning so that Tyra will make his appearance tonight? For heaven's sake, Darry, how will I even accomplish that in such a short time? I think you will resort to spouting fallacies and nonsense when you get cornered. I'm never expecting this from you. No, I. And again, I'm never expecting you to be Tyra's accomplice either. The way you knew so much about him? I should have seen the signs. No. I was just doing my job. Please take care of the to the detention center. Can't be. Right away, Mr. King. Is it true? Someone tell me this isn't true. <laughs> the hell? Mr. Darby, you're under arrest for being an office to the serial killer and the murder of Arden Burroughs. We were just working with him on doing the whole framing thing. Now we're office? I can't stop knocking my knees together and my feet are stuck to the floor. I only registered the words coming at me. It's the cold metal of the cuffs against my skin. My legs nearly start wiggling when I feel a rough tug on my wrist in order to make me walk. The one officer. As he approaches me and leans in as in he wants to whisper something. Thank you for your cooperation partner. What? So he's the actual tiger. And you have to be very big with my plan. You son of a bitch. A sudden outburst catches everyone off guard. Officer, my colleagues, Carl, all except for him. That's insane. No matter how much I struggle, no matter how much I scream and flail, I keep being carried off while Aslan grins serotonic. Okay. That's insane. So we got set up. Oh. Stay here. Right after shoving me like I'm vermin on the earth, 
Walk to close the door. Well, even go the mask. Well, well, well. Look what the cat dragged in. Okay. Not pleased to make your acquaintance, dipshit. Okay, wait, why did they put us in the same stitches cell? Hmm. This is weird. Not like I'm happy about it either. You're the little dipshit who set me up after all. Yeah, can you fucking stop that? I already told you it wasn't me. I think I was born yesterday. A lot of people in the police force are fucking stupid, but I know a damn smart ass when I see one. Mm. You and that pompous asshole who act like he got a lion mane up his ass. Okay. Both of you set me up. You're half right. Uh, what? The initial plan was to lay a trap for you with a fake target. It was really my idea, not going to deny that. But judging from the fact that you got here so quickly without knowing what the hell was going on, and how everyone thought the chief was dead even before coming into the room, I think my nails to my hand. That bastard must have murdered him and planned to pin the crown on both of us. Huh. People say I'm a douchebag. Well, you are a killer, even if you say you're doing it for the greater good. Okay. Surprised you're not losing your shit over all of this, especially considering how you acted before. I mean, even if I'm a freaking mess right now, I thought you'd be angrier. Oh, make no mistake, I'm seething. Way to cool my head if I want to get out of here and murder that. Okay. All right. Yeah, I'm gonna go with how I feel about this. Tempting with that with mercy. Oh, shoot, let me save and then answer that. Sometimes it would, it would still be a mercy. He'd have too easy. No, that best needs to rot in jail. Kinda mild for my taste, but wouldn't be bad to see the trash go where it belongs for once. He also deserves to be punched though. <laughs> oh, that I can do. Still, too so early to think about how we're gonna deal with him. We can't do anything while we're stuck here. Dipshit. Mm. You stop calling me that. My name's Charlie. Well, excuse me, princess. Patience, Charlie. Patience. You always punch him later. I must be angry because I'm still technically part of the way that he's here. Speaking of names, this entire is not your real name either, right? Mm, no shit. Okay, the fish is over. I swear to God, you keep it up with this hot and cold attitude. I want to start calling you dickhead for the rest of your life. Fine. The name's Oz. Happy now? Okay, Oz. Let's so start. So, Oz, we seem to have no. We definitely got off on the wrong foot. But if we both want to get revenge on that walking garbage, we need to cooperate. Work together. Tell you what, Bambi. Now it's Bambi. If you can use that giant brain of yours to get us the hell out of here, I'm game. I even know someone out there who can help us. You got yourself a deal. Okay. After discussing the new plan, we wait for a certain someone to show up. Oz nods at me and I get into position. It's showtime. I lie on the floor and close my eyes. Are right, you two, time for your meal, but no funny but It will happen. <sighs> what do you think happened, moron? She, of course she fucking collapsed. But why, shit, for love? So much for being righteous, all you cops are the fucking same. You need to call for a... Hey! Can't leave her alone, asshole. What if she dies? Die? Oh, God. They didn't turn me for this. Guy touches my neck with two of his fingers to feel my pulse. I'll just call someone. Just filling with his clothes. Put on this really catch this on camp. 
I'm a fucking moron. I remember he was alone on duty today. I want someone this dumb in the police force. Well, he's a very athletic, reliable, and kind hearted. I shouldn't have asked. If <laughs> Nevin the key from the guard opening our handcuffs, we proceed to undress him so that Oz could put on his clothes. Once we cut up him, Oz takes off his red wig and smudges off his makeup. Okay. All yours. Untie the hairband on the wig and put it on. This camera's making you nervous. Are you absolutely sure you're not working right now? Yeah, don't worry. Memory's full. How do you know? Hello, Carl with Bernard. I'll tell you later. Alright, we definitely still can't exit the entrance even with the cameras out of the way. Mm, but the second floor it might be doable. Sound good to me. Just hope you don't leave me behind. Unlike the Lion Trash King, I'm not a fucking traitor, Bambi. Okay. Thanks. Alright. Hmm. <laughs> You've got guts, Bambi. I'll give you that. Not so bad yourself. I can't believe we just jumped from a window on the second floor. But we survived. In fact, no matter how good or bad my plan was, I can't believe we even managed to sneak well enough to go unnoticed. Was that security always this lax? It actually kind of irritates me how easily we're able to escape. Oh well. I'm not part of the police anymore. Okay. Okay, here we are. For the first time since we stopped running, take a look at the place Oz has brought us to. And I immediately recognize it. Are you kidding me? Bambi. Hmm. Archer's already not gonna like this. We really got no other choice. Alright, lead the way. Who would have thought? Of all places, a bear themed cafe. To be continued. Huh. Well, I guess that is it for now. So, this is Killer Trait. And if you like what you saw so far and want to play this for yourself, of course, everything for this game will be in the description below. Let me get a hard ass now. I don't know if you had a hard ass before, but eh. But yeah, if you want to follow this development of the game, of course, like I said, description below. That's where everything for this game will be. Um, I do like this though. It's very nice and, you know, it's different. Um, I do like the art style and the dialogue and how there's, you know, voice acting is always good. You know, there's a little bit of pressure off of me to read everything. So, you can get mad at that. But I do like the game. I am going to follow the development myself and see how um, things will unfold in the future with um, future updates so yeah yeah so uh, this is pretty pretty cool i do like it a lot <clears throat> so not gonna ramble on too long i'm gonna end it here so if you like this video of course don't hesitate to like share comment subscribe if you want to support the video or the channel as well that's you know appreciated if not that's fine um with that being said, hopefully y'all had a good day, a good yesterday, and better tomorrow. And I will catch y'all in the next video.